Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. Today, I'm going to tell you five tips to better your bartending game. This is especially important if you are a beginning bartender, either at home or professionally, or if you are a seasoned professional, this might serve as a friendly reminder. You might be asking right now, why should you be listening to me about bartending tips? You certainly don't have to, but I bartended professionally for 20 years before I ended up here on YouTube making these videos for you. And I've picked up a few things along the way, all of which I carry over to my home bartending. So here we go, five things that are gonna be awesome. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Oh, hey, welcome to my home. Today's video is sponsored by Dr. Squatch. Dr. Squatch makes all natural soaps, hair care, deodorant catered towards men. Although I know for a fact my fiance has been stealing my deodorant because she has been smelling fantastic lately. My personal favorite is the Grapefruit IPA. I also like the Alpine Sage, but there are a wide range of wonderful smells. Coconut Castaway, Eucalyptus Greek Yogurt, but I'm excited to announce they also have a new scent, the Limited Edition Crypto Cleanse. Yes, this is for all of you crypto freaks, swapping NFTs, slinging blockchains, whatever you kids do these days. This is your non-fungible freshness. And if you use the code DSQ Anders at checkout, you will receive 20% off your order of $20 or more. So go ahead, treat yourself. You will absolutely love it. If you don't, Dr. Squatch will give you your money back, no questions asked. So now if you don't mind, I would like to get back to my spot, eh? Thank you, Dr. Squatch. Back to the video. Okay, let's get started. Number one, use fresh citrus. This may seem really basic. In fact, if you're already doing this, maybe you're thinking that's a no brainer, but I have been receiving questions as to what brands of lemon and lime juice I'm using. And I'm not using any brands. This is freshly squeezed juice from the fruit. And I suggest you do the same. Now, I do understand the question because in the videos, I always have a bottle of juice next to me, but that's only because I make it part of my prep before the videos. It is freshly squeezed every time and it tastes better than store-bought juices or juices from concentrate. Something to note on fresh juices, it's called fresh for a reason because it's fresh and it won't last forever. So that flavor does start to die off. It oxidizes, it becomes astringent, it becomes bitter. I would say if you juice ahead of time, keep it chilled in the fridge, keep it sealed, and it's gonna last a bit longer. A day later, you could still use that juice, it's not gonna kill you, but it's not gonna be as good as right from the orb of goodness. You can, if you want, get even nerdier than this. In the book, Liquid Intelligence by Dave Arnold, he mentions that the best time to enjoy lemon and lime juice is actually several hours after you juice it. I think it's up to 10 hours. Now, I realize for the average bartender at home, this might not be very practical. I say just juice it fresh. Tried and true works every time, especially if you are using store-bought juices. Yes, I am aware there is a thing called super juice, but I'm not here to talk about that today. I'm here to talk about fresh juice. Number two, know your glassware. I'm referring primarily to your up glasses here. Now, the first thing I want to touch on is presentation. It's a good idea to know how much your glassware holds and if it's ridiculously huge or if it's ridiculously small. If you're making a cocktail and you put it in a really big glass, it looks incomplete. It looks a little silly. If you put it in a really small glass, it's just not going to hold your cocktail. But if you have just the right glass for that cocktail, it looks intentional and thought through. Now, some comments that I get say, Anders, my cocktail does not look the same in my glass as it does in yours. And the first thing I think of is, well, maybe your glassware is a different size than mine. However, another thing is the dilution. So one thing that often gets forgotten about in cocktails, which is very important, is a good portion of that cocktail is actually water. As an example, most of my shaking cocktails are three ounces pre-dilution. After I shake and chill the drink, it comes up to be about four and a half ounces, which in this glass is right below the lip of the glass. Now, how do you know how much your glassware holds? It's easy, you measure it out with water and a jigger. I do think it's even a good idea if you have brand new glassware and on the packaging it says, this glass holds five and a half ounces, it's still a good idea to measure it out. This one had packaging that said it holds five and a half ounces and I measured it out and it came to the absolute tippy tippy top of the glass, which as you can guess, is not practical. But for my four and a half ounce cocktail, it works beautifully. Now, the second point I wanna make is how you enjoy that cocktail. And if you have one of those Bojumbo martini glasses at home and you want a cocktail that fills that glass, you are gonna have to make one massive cocktail. Now, it might be perfect on the first sip, but by the time you get to the bottom, if you drink it at a regular pace, it's probably gonna be a little warm. It's not gonna be as good. It's gonna be meh. So this is an argument for a more sensibly sized cocktail glass. I know, I sound really nitpicky here. I, I am being nitpicky, but it's these little things that are gonna up your game. <sighs> Number three, 
Store your vermouths in the fridge. I can't reiterate this enough. Once you open up that bottle of vermouth, it starts to die. So what you want to do is keep it chilled and that prolongs its lifespan. Pretty simple. I wanted to show you my fancy fridge here, which is our YouTube refrigerator. Vermouths are a fortified wine. So really any fortified wines you wanna keep chilled. That includes sherry, Madeira, Lillet, Coqui Americano, anything that is a wine base. They are higher proof than wine because they're fortified, meaning a spirit was added, which is gonna raise the proof of that liquid, therefore prolonging its life, but it's not high enough to where it is shelf stable. So once you open that bottle, you wanna keep it in the fridge. Now, how long does this last? Within a month after opening the bottle, it's gonna be great. In fact, it's still usable two months after you open that bottle. But after that, it starts to drop off and the flavors aren't as good, it's not as aromatic, and it's better to just get a fresh bottle. That's why I always say, get a smaller bottle of your vermouth, vermouth fridge. Number four, keep a tidy bar. When I say that, I wanna make two points. One of them is you should always give everything a home. All of your bottles, all of your tools, you designate a place for them so they are always where you need them to be when you need them. In the culinary world, there's a term called mise en place, which translates to putting in place. This is really gonna ring true if you work behind a professional bar because things can get busy. You're usually working with other bartenders, bar backs, other people behind the bar. So you should all be on the same page as far as where the tools live, where the bottles live, so that everything just runs more efficiently. But I do also think that it's useful for a home bar. Maybe less so in the home bar, but it's a good idea to get in the habit of giving everything a home. If you're making a Manhattan and you add the ice to your mixing glass and you don't have a spoon, well, that Manhattan is just gonna dilute, get sad, it's gonna die, and you are gonna get really frustrated wishing you could stir that cocktail. Being organized will make things easier. And if it's easier, you're gonna be more inclined to do it again, which makes it more fun, and the better you will become at bartending. The second part of this is to keep a clean bar. I like to always have a bar rag handy. Spills happen, that's part of the game. And it, you should also keep your bottles clean. You just have to wipe them down. It's nice to have the bottles looking good, but it's more important when it comes to spirits that have a lot of sugar in it, like a curacao, which has a good deal of sugar in it. And when you pour, sometimes it's gonna start running down the side. And if you don't wipe that up, you just put the top on and put it away, that's gonna become sticky. And after sticky, it becomes crusty. And then it looks gross, you can't get the top off, and people are gonna look at your orange curacao and say, I don't need one of your margaritas. Keep your bottles clean, keep your tools clean, keep your bar clean, give everything a home, and you are gonna take pride in what you do. Finally, number five, taste everything. All kinds of spirits and liqueurs and syrups, whatever, taste them all individually so you know exactly what that flavor tastes like. Then when it comes time to make a cocktail, you will be able to pick that flavor out and you will know if there's too much in there for your taste or too little. Or maybe you'll have a cocktail that falls flat and you think, you know what would be good? Peychaud's bitters, because I know exactly what Peychaud's bitters taste like. Where do you start? Well, I'll show you. Look behind your bar and you pick something out. Sue's, what does Sue's taste like? I know it works really well in the white Negroni, but what does it taste like by itself? And you don't need much, it's just a little bit. First of all, it smells like a field and it tastes like herbs and very bitter. It also has a sweetness up front and it's a very strong flavor. So if you're gonna mix this into your first cocktail using this ingredient, I would only add a little bit, but at least I have an idea going into it what it's gonna be. Another thing is bitters. That's something that we typically just use in dashes, but it's a good idea to taste it on its own so you know what it is it tastes like. What are some of your tips? Let me know. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.